Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Wittemelo Makoboshani, the creator of the Be Smart Budget, your sister in budgeting, and of course, the self-appointed personal finance activist. So, um, welcome back to my returning subscribers. And if you are new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button and join the family. In this channel, we, we talk about money, personal finance, and we do a bit of living in a form of vlogs okay so um today guys i want to talk i want i want us to get honest i actually i want to introduce a segment called let's get honest because you find that as people that are here behind the camera talking about finances talking about money we have things figured out but we do not have them figured out do you get i don't know if you understand me so that is why today I want to, to be honest about lifestyle creep. You know, um, six out of 10 times, I have it figured out. <laughs> I have it figured out, but four out of 10 times, my emotions are taking over. So that is the first thing that also you need to recognize when you are dealing with your finances. What exactly um, pushes you to spend the way that you do? What exactly motivates you to be a shopaholic? What motivates you to be a spender? You know, you need to, to, to pinpoint those places and you look at them. I have noticed that I am an emotional spender. So in order to find um, joy, peace and all of those things, I need to be spending. I need to be living the life that I want. But besides that, um, I have an eye for finer things. I've always had an eye for finer things. Like I want to live in a nice place. I want to drive a nice car. Or even if it's a, it's not a nice, but a nice car, but I want to get achieve all the things that I want to get. Besides having a, a great savings account, besides having a, a banging a shares portfolio, besides having all of that, I want to live a nice life. Um, but all of these things, cause irregular expenses because now you end up finding that you were spending money irregularly you are no longer following your budget but because often was nisha you are using your you are spending your money i won't say recklessly but it's it now becomes irregular spending like for the past three months i've been looking at my miscellaneous in my miscellaneous account I sh in, in my um, line on my budget, I shouldn't have them kind of, I shouldn't have that much of money because I have money allocated to entertainment. I have allo money allocated to eating out. So why is the money in my miscellaneous? Okay, so uh, today I want to actually speak about lifestyle creep. I have been bitten by the bug of lifestyle creep. Lifestyle creep, guys, is where you, when, when, um, when you get access to, uh, income you know when your money increases you also increase the way of living if you were driving a mercedes um now you want an suv if you were dry if you were staying in a one bedroom flat but now you want to move to a three bedroom those are expect those are examples of lifestyle creep so now you find that you are spending money um you you, you end up living paycheck to paycheck that's what lifestyle creep causes because now you are no longer living below your means you are living within your means because what happens is you find that you say okay i can afford this and you take the box i can afford this you take the box i can afford i don't know if anyone can relate but i have been beaten by the bug guys i sit at the back um, in, in front of this camera i read personal finance books i try to be on my game at all times but i must say I have fallen off the wagon. I have led um, the the finer things in life. <laughs> I have let the finer things in life get to my finances. Where it, and these regular expenses, guys, have started to to steal away from my financial security because now I um, and and my savings account. Because you find that now I, I get to a place where I'm like. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to withdraw from my savings account. I don't know if anyone does this. Okay, I have an emergency fund. I have um, 
a sinking fund for a specific car that I want. I have um, a, a sinking fund for Zuri's education. She's going to school next year. I have a sinking fund for, for to, to make my room look pretty and, you know, just to make my home comfortable. You know, so those are the four sinking funds that I have. Uh, with the emergency fund, I can access it with 20, within 24 hours. So what I have gotten to a place, uh, what I've started doing is, let's say it's mid-month and I have blew my entertainment fund, I have blew my eating out fund because um, with the salary that I have, all these things are not much. Like uh, this, this entertainment is not a lot of money. And I found, I, I, I actually discovered that in order to be a functioning, well human being, happy in my element of spending, I need uh, about a, a thousand to 1.5 weekly. I need that kind of mon money weekly. And that kind of money cannot come from my salary because I do not earn that much, you know? So, uh, what, what I've started to do now is I go into my emergency fund. I withdraw money for the weekend. And I'm like, uh, when I get paid, I'm going to replace it. And I haven't done that. So, my gauge in my emergency fund ha has went low. And the only thing I have to show for that is pictures. So, guys, I am here to make you aware that it is okay to fall off the wagon. It is okay to to start to live paycheck to paycheck, but you need to be able to realize that you need to get back into. If you have fallen off the wagon, if you have started living paycheck to paycheck, if like me you have raided your emergency fund, if like me you haven't been saving for the past three months because the lifestyle that you have chosen now requires you to have ex ex excessive money. You know, this is what you can do to reverse it. You know, there's ways to reverse curses. So I have seen this as a big curse in my life because my goals, I, 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 I haven't been able to reach my quarterly goals because of this. I haven't been able to say, okay, see, it, 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 it's December in two months. And when December comes, I usually do an audit of my finances for the whole year and I go back to my goals and I check. I am even scared that when December comes, I'm going to beat myself up. So this is what we are going to do. It is September and I know people are like, no, the year has gone. Just carry on um, where you have fallen off the wagon. No, but what I am going to say today is you can still reverse it. How do you reverse it? You do a lifestyle audit. You're going to have to audit your life. If you have to downgrade, you're going to have to go back to downgrading. Let's forget about what people are going to say for a while. Because our goals and our future, it's more... I, I feel like our financial security and financial health should be the most important thing. So if, like me, you value financial security, you value financial health, you are going to do a lifestyle audit. You are going to downgrade if you have to downgrade. You are going to sell the things that you bought unnecessarily, the things that you thought were necessities and they are not, that air fryer, you are going to sell it. You know, I know that a lot of people are like, no, it makes your life easier. I get that. But you are in a state now of financial recovery where you have to recover your financial security and your financial dignity. You know, once you start eating at your savings you the next thing is debt there's people that finance their life with debt so if you're one of those people you know that okay now i have been living from payday to payday loans i have been struggling with this lifestyle creep because guys the, i have i didn't suffer with this for a long time because as i said six out of ten times i knew that i had to save i knew that i needed to have an emergency fund i knew that i needed to invest and i knew that i had everything else had to come after i have paid myself first after i have invested and saved but now with lifestyle creep i find that things have become upside down i have i have 
<laughs> I go, I go, guys. I'm eating takeouts every weekend. I am, and you must know that I now have a car. So I have added expenses like my car installment fuel, a car wash, and all of that. But I find that I'm paying more on fuel now because, okay, like I was I cannot stay in the house anymore. So what do I do? I get in my car, Jack. What does getting in my car require? Petrol. So now, even with the inflated prices of petrol, there's lifestyle creep and there is this economy inflation. So between the two, we have to come to a place of, uh, um, we have to reach a mutual agreement with ourselves and say, no, listen, the economy is nonsense. Um, and I want to live this life, but I cannot afford it. Let's do this. So this is a lifestyle. This is me saying, get your life in order. Do the lifestyle check. Okay, so I said that what you're going to do is do your lifestyle audit, downgrade, do all the things that you have to do. And then you're going to have to have a budget, guys. A budget is going to save you from a lot. I do have a budget now. Even with all this nonsensical spending I've been doing, I am still using the Be Smart budget to budget. And the funny thing is, I can see it going red. I can see it going red and I'm like, oh, I know I will draw from my investment and I'll make it green. So that is the other problem. So make sure that you will have you have a budget and you are sticking to it. Get back to creating a budget. If you do not know where to begin with creating a budget, purchase the Be Smart budget. It is 179 and you do not have to buy it yearly. It's not a recurring monthly fee. You buy it once and it's yours and you use it for as long as you want, you know? So get the budget if you don't you don't know where to start. If you can create your own template, that is great. And then the other thing is you need to go back to your drawing bed, drawing board, set your long-term goals, your short-term goals, how you are going to receive them, and then go back to automating your savings and your investing, even your big line items on your budget. Go back to uh, automating them. And then you need to go on a financial cleanse. A financial cleanse means that you say, okay, today, for this month I, for the next three months i am only going to spend on rent food i i mean the big line items on your budget which is your necessity your necessities your fixed are uh, your fixed expenses so you're going to say no i'm going to spend on my fixed expenses for the next three months i will not I will not allocate money for entertainment. I will not allocate money for this until I get my saving, my my emergency fund back to where it should be or where to, uh, or, or even have one. So that is what you need to do, a financial cleanse and no spend challenge. Get into that and you will see it is going to help you. And then the other thing is you're going to have to reduce your monthly outflow. This is where your, your financial cleanse come in and then you declutter. You bought things, shoes, handbags, hair, everything because you were go, you were in a funk. You, you you are an emotional spender. What you need to do now, you need to sell those things again. You do not need them, especially if it's clothing and all of those things. You do not need them. So what you can do for yourself is you can sell them. You know, and then um make active choices because guys your finances your your actions today are going to determine whether you own that car in 10 years um whether you own that house that you want in 10 years or you even have the savings for your kids to go to university and all of those things in the future so make active financial choices be present in your financial choices do not just go with impulse buying do not just do impulse spending it is going to leave you in debt if you are someone that always resolve to date because unlike me some, some of you do not have savings accounts so what you have done is you have started digging up a debt hole so this is how you can get out of the debt hole if you have been in this debt hole and you need to get out you see when you're doing your financial um and cleanse all the money that you would have allocated to your books any any uh, all your variable expenses you are now going to allocate to your debt you are going to pay off your debt as quickly as you can so that you can get out of the debt hole so guys i hope this was helpful and i hope you're going to enjoy these let's get honest um episodes because i am going to bring them because it is time that we get honest with our money and we get honest with ourselves so if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i will definitely see you on the next one